Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be answering a kind of common question I get, and that's how to build airfields in the scenario editor in Command Modern Operations. Now, I've had this question a couple different ways, and uh, usually when people have trouble with this, it's because they forgot to add access points to the runway. They only do something like add a runway, or they accidentally do a runway grade taxiway instead of a regular runway. I don't know why that would mess things up, but sometimes it does. So for today, we're going to be taking a look at a relatively simple setup here. We're going to be using Otis Air Force Base. Now, one thing I want to say before I get carried away here is you can always use a single unit airfield. A single unit airfield, if you were just insert a standard facility here, you just type in the word airfield and you simply select what runways you need and how many of them you need. Then press the OK button and bam, you're good to go. The disadvantage of a single unit airfield is you can only be engaged with nuclear weapons. You can't actually attack this with conventional weapons, even though it's a massive group of smaller units. This is awesome if you don't need this to be a target. And I recommend it a thousand times over and this is a specific reason why you're not doing it so i'm gonna go ahead and delete that uh, let's go ahead and zoom in on our lovely otis air force base here and we can see that the sentinel graphics are catching up with us but we actually have enough detail here that we can actually get quite a bit of this airfield figured out the first thing i always like to do is i like to do the runways hey there we go now i can see and uh, the easiest way to do the runway believe it or not is not with the sentinel graphics the easiest way, in my opinion, to do it is to actually flip over to terrain mode. When you flip over to terrain mode, it becomes extremely easy to actually see anything that is tarmac related, in this case, our runway. So our main runway here, I'm just going to go ahead and use my directional tool here. It says it's 1.7 nautical miles on a heading of 307 degrees. So if we wanted to work that out real quickly, 1.7 times 1852 is 3,100 meters. I'm going to round that up to 32. Half of that is going to be 1,600. Nice. So I'm going to go about halfway up, about 1,600 meters up. That's going to be about right here. It's going to be halfway up the runway. I'm going to press the insert key, left click. And I'm going to go ahead and type in runway. In this case, we need a 3,200 meter runway. Usually people like to come in here and label runways. Warning, warning. There are true headings in command, not magnetic headings. So if you're trying to line this up with the correct runway, you have to actually do the addition for magnetic variation. In this particular case, it's a 15 degree. So even though our actual heading of our runway here comes in at 307 degrees, 307 plus 15, chances are this is actually runway tree two and not runway tree one. It's worth noting this, or it could even be a runway tree if it was low enough. So you wanna make sure you check that before you do something silly. But the reason I'm calculating the heading is more important is to right click and set the orientation of the runway to match the true heading. So in this case, like I said, it was a tree zero of six degrees. So we can actually rotate this so the runway itself is heading its correct true heading. That's good, we want that. Let's go ahead and do our little runway right here. This is the other one. This one is not 1.7, 1 it's 1 1.2. 1.2 times 1852 is 222, is about 2400 meters. It's gonna be 1200 is gonna be the halfway point. So let's find about 1200, which is right here, no surprise. Go ahead and insert. We need something a little bit, let's do this one right here. It looks pretty good. And now we wanna set the orientation as well so that when we attack this, we can attack it. It looks like it's about 41 degrees. Keep in mind, orientation also dictates what direction aircraft take on. So you wanna keep that in mind as well when you're building this. So let's say about 43 degrees. We have a runway grade taxiway here. I don't think it's actually a runway grade taxiway, but I'm just gonna count it as being so. We'll say that's about 2,600 meters as well. We're also going to set that to be parallel to that other airport runway that we were just looking at a moment ago. Set this one to be about 41 degrees as well. And it looks like we also have this really monster long one right here. That's going to be our 3,200 meters. Man, those are long runways. I do some flying in the real world myself, but I never get to land on runways like that. There has to be a real special occasion I get to land on something like that, like an air show I'm attending or something along those lines. It's worth noting that runway-grade taxiways can be taken off and landed from, so they're going to provide a new set of targets. Okay, so those have all been set. They've all been gotten the correct orientation. I'm actually just going to confirm that real fast. Yep, now we're good to go to add in all the buildings. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of terrain view and go back to this one so I can see a little more clearly. It looks like we have a main building here. It looks like we have stuff like this. Every once in a while, you get lucky and you can spot where ammo is stored. Uh, this doesn't seem to be the case, but it is going to be a requirement for this particular airfield. So I'm going to go ahead and add some ammo storage down here. Again, I'm just going to press insert. I'm going to type in the word ammo. And you can pick your type of ammo storage. Another warning, 
you want to make sure you load your ammo storage with ammunition before you group the units together. It's going to be much simpler and safer to use. So in this case, I'm going to assume it's got some revetments, nothing too, too fancy. I'll just put a couple of them in here. Nothing, again, it all depends on your individual airport. We're also going to need some fuel. Fuel is pretty simple. I don't actually know where they store fuel here. I'm not going to go look it up online because I'm sure the FBI wants to have enough conversations with me. I'm going to go swing over here real quick. I'm going to assume they just put some fuel here. So I like to type in AV gas when I do this because it's going to go ahead and give me something along these lines. I'll go ahead and click that one right there. It looks pretty good. I'll just duplicate it so I have a pair of them. So now we have runways, taxiways, we have fuel storage and ammo storage. Are we done? No. We need access points. So in this case, I'm actually going to flip on the terrain layer again because I want to be able to spot anywhere where you can go from the main hangars to the runways. Now this is important because if I add every single access point to the runway, that means that people trying to blow up this airport are going to have to work a lot harder to do so. Instead, what I like to do is I like to concentrate on access points that connect to the main part of the airbase. Taking a quick peek here, basically there's parking down here, a little bit of parking up here, and obviously there's parking here. That tells me that we're probably going to have a total of four access points. Obviously you can come in here and mark every single access point to the runway if you choose to do so. But keep in mind, in doing so, you make it more difficult for the enemy to blow everything up because as long as there's one working access point hypothetically you can get anywhere in this entire airfield that's a scary prospect but it's also just kind of how things run in this so first things first i'm gonna go ahead and set myself an access point right here accss we want a very large aircraft one this is obviously going to be for a christmas tree we're going to grab that one i'm going to go ahead and place one up here you can place it right on the runway if you need because again it's where the runway is going to intersect the taxiway we're going to have another one right here and I'm just trying to predict where this next one would be. So we're imagining we're parking here. You can get onto the runway here. We already got that one. We did not get this one. And we did not get this one. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Again, place the access points where you can get onto the runway, keeping in mind what I was saying a moment ago. Are we done? No. We need to go ahead and add some buildings now, too. So either buildings or places to park your aircraft. So in this case, taking a quick look at the rest of the facility, I know there's a lot of parking down here, if I recall correctly. Let me go ahead and flip it back to the terrain. Yeah, there's a lot of parking. So I'm just going to click here. I'm going to type in the word parking. You have the parking spots, not to be confused with the tarmac, which is going to be this stuff right here. In this case, I'm going to say 2x, very large aircraft. And I'm just going to spread them out. If you know where the individual parking space at a given airport is, you probably want to use that rather than guesstimating like I am now. So it looks like we have a spot for some large aircraft right there. I'm going to go ahead and plop some of those in as well. And looks like we have a pretty good size hangar right here. Again, it probably isn't a hangar in the real world. I'm just using this as a quick example. I'm also going to assume that there's a fairly good size hangar here. Another word of warning, by the way, you want to make sure that you orient these things appropriately, because right now they're oriented to the north. That might not actually match the shape of the building. As a matter of fact, if I open up the aircraft hangar, you can probably notice that its width is 70, but its length is 120. If you get that sideways, basically people bombing it will be hitting it from the wrong angle. And it's important that you get that correct. Last but not least, uh, we have the beautiful Christmas tree right here. I'm actually going to flip back over to terrain mode. It's just easier for me to see. That was effective. But in terrain mode, you'd get a pretty good look of that Christmas tree. Hey, there it goes. So we can actually predict where each one of these individual parking spots are. So I'm just going to assume the parking spots at the end of the tree. I'm actually going to type in parking this time. We're going to do a very large aircraft or just a regular large aircraft. I'm going to go put from at the end of each one of these positions. And obviously you can park one at the tippy top as well if you need to. And now we are almost ready to go. This is the part where I like to add in the last couple details which makes an airport extra fun. Sometimes you get things like a barracks, like for example, let's assume that this building right here, again, just taking a shot at it, perhaps this building is a barracks. So I can assign it to be a barracks. By the way, if I were doing a cargo mission, I could use this barracks as the item that I load up with cargo, going up to our edit unit actions, and of course, editing cargo. So I mean, if I wanted to get a little fancy, again, this is getting a little advanced, but you know, why not have a little bit too much fun while we're here? I actually like infantry section. It's probably one of my favorite units that you can use. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. There it is, right there. Let's say there's 20. Boop, and look at that. Now we've got cargo stored inside that barracks. I always like to add a control tower too, because that's just me. Again, this is completely optional. Don't think that you need it. Control tower, and of course, we always like to add our air traffic control radar. In eastern countries, this is usually like one of the Barlac radars, or very, very big ones like your P-15s and P-17s. They usually have height finding, like an odd pair or an odd group as well. 
over here in the States, we would probably have just good old fashioned air traffic control radar. And it looks right here that we have a generic air traffic control radar, which we can now link to everything. Now, before I group everybody together to make the finished working airfield, there's one more detail that I want to take a look at that's really critical. And that's, do I want to put aircraft in specific spots at my airport? If I want to do so, it's actually easier to do it at this stage than it is at a later stage. So for example, I've got my group of aircraft in these little parking spots. What if I wanted to put an F-15 just in these parking spots and not over here? What I could do is I could left click on it, press control F6, and then I could just go ahead and throw my F-15 in there. We'll just do the A model to keep my life a little bit simpler here. Grab this one real quickly here. We'll do an F-16A. This is different, by the way, than doing it by adding it to the whole airport at the same time. And the reason being is if you add it to the entire airport at the exact same time, what you're actually going to get is these aircraft going to the most logical spot, which is often something like a hangar versus just sitting out here in the woods. Of course, in the real world, the F-15s would be sitting here ready to scramble at a moment's notice should they need to in a particular situation. So that's why I'm taking the extra time to actually make sure they're in the right spot. A word of warning, however, you wanna be very cautious with this and that if you assign a loadout to these, after you've regrouped them, they will get moved around again to be rearmed. So if I actually want to arm these individual aircraft, you want to click on them, ready arm them, and then go ahead and select what you want. In this case, I'll throw some sparrows on there just because I can. I'll grab this one again. We'll just do the front two because we don't want to spend all afternoon working on this. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we're ready for the finishing touches. Go ahead and left click and drag over the entire airfield. Make sure you get every detail. It's going to lag for a moment. Then press G to group the entire airfield into one unit. It's worth noting that this selected unit can vary. If this is not the center runway or you want a different main unit to represent where everybody else is, you can click on it and press F4 and actually pick which one of these you want. So for example, let me say that this is actually going to be a group lead. I could then click it and hit set group lead. And now I'm good to go. So if I click that and actually tap F6, check it out. There's my two F-15s, and note my F-15s are sitting here parked, ready to go on the Christmas tree if I need them. Now, of course, if I hit Control F6 and I wanted to add some, let's say I want to put some CJs on here or something like that, I could grab a group of those. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one right here. That looks pretty good. I'm going to add four of those. And now if I hit F6, you'll notice that they're ready to be selected. And they've actually been assigned this parking spot way the heck over here. I believe this is actually a hangar, not a parking spot. And you can see they're ready to go. Now, one thing you're probably noticing is when I'm hitting F6 and I click one of these and hit ready arm, you'll notice none of these loadouts are available. The reason for that is if you were to go to the editor real quick and check my scenario features, I don't have unlimited magazines on. If you wanted to be able to arm these F-16s and not have unlimited things, you'd have to actually find your ammo storage, which for us, if I recall correctly, was down here. I tapped the 9 key on my numpad, by the way, so I could manually select these units. Select one of them, and then you're actually going to have to go to magazines, and then you're going to have to add weapons. Now, one of the cool tricks to this is you can hit uh, filter by keyword, or you can say show only weapons capable compatible with aircraft toasted. So for example, I could come in here and say, uh, let's see here, we'll get ourselves a uh, ton of these. You can say add 10,000 of those. You can come down here and say, well, let me get a couple of these. Uh, let's see, well, we want some Mavericks. Mavericks are good. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of those. And let me say, uh, well, let's do some harms as well. I'm gonna add some of those. And now you can come in here and you can customize how many of them. Let's say I have 100 of those tanks. Let's say I have 200 of these tanks. Let's say I have 50 of these. Let's say I've got 100 of these. We also, of course, want to probably add something like Sidewinders. Oop, filter my keyboard, Sidewinder. There we go. We'll say we have some of those. We'll go, uh, go ahead and I think that looks pretty good. Again, I'm not 100% sure which version that F-15 carries. I don't want to be wrong. Wow, the F-16 can carry just about everything under the sun here. Oh, okay. There we go. Much better. Let's see what Sidewinder variation we're actually dealing with here. Looks like we're dealing with the M model, add some of those. Yeah, M model, both cases. Uh, where are our sparrows? Again, you want to be careful. Those are AIM-7s. So let's go ahead and add some of those. And then, of course, like I said, we could just come in here and say, oh, we got 100 of these. Let's say 500 of those. Again, you can have a lot of fun with this because if this particular building is destroyed, it means you won't be able to rearm your aircraft. So now if I go to my F-16, hit ready arm, uh, I missed something, didn't I? Yeah, you can see exactly how I've got the 500 available, but I don't have those other items yet because, again, those were AMRAMs. So if I go back to my F-15s, fingers crossed. Ah, bummer. 
we're missing uh, the drop tanks. Yeah, we don't have any AIM 9J, so we wouldn't be able to equip this aircraft. So you can see why that would make it very, very strategic. So that's basically all there is to it. This is now a functioning airport. At any point, I can go ahead and select it. Let's go ahead and launch a Bull 1 here. It's actually pretty cool. If you've ever actually watched this in action, you can see that Bull 1, as soon as I launched him, he taxied, and he's actually at the access point of the runway. And what will happen over time is he'll actually move across the airport, get onto the main runway, and then take off a moment later. And there he goes, just like I promised. Now, of course, I can click him at any time, press the B key, and he's going to turn around, and he's going to come right back for a landing. He's set himself up in a nice wide traffic pattern. Oh, come on, I don't need to go that far down Rhode Island to get there, whatever. I'm not the pilot, Dunk, and he's back inside. So if I were to zoom back in, you can see that he's going to go and get himself all the way back to, let's see what his parking spot is. He parks up here, but he used this access point. So again, you want to watch that. So what fun is all this if we can't blow it all up? So let's go ahead and switch to the uh, Jerks team here. And look at that. Just so happens there's some um, Iskenders up in, I think that's Plymouth-ish, uh, south of Boston there. We're going to go ahead and press uh, Shift F1. I'm going to go ahead and do a manual attack here. Grab everybody. Uh, let me see. I have uh, eight of these. That's going to be 32 missiles. Eh, let's just let them do it the way they think they want to do it. Attack. Go ahead and do free fire. And let them rip. Ah. I see how it is. Let's hope I didn't accidentally pick the nuclear version. Ah, oh, they're within minimum range. Ah, I hate it when I do that. Boop. I guess we have to put them up here then. Now try it. Hey, that worked. Ha ha ha. Ah, remember all that hard work we just did? It certainly would be a shame if something just were to come out of low Earth orbit and uh, blow it up. <laughs> Let's see what happened here. I'll switch back to Otis here. Team Otis. Hey, we did pretty well. It only really damaged one of the buildings, which is why manual launches are always recommended when using ballistic weapons. All right, so hopefully this helps people out as far as airports go. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is combine this style of an airport with a single unit airport. It will melt on you. And another thing you want to kind of watch out for is building two airports and grouping them together. You tend to get some really glitchy behavior if you do that. Other than that, if you have any questions, uh, toss in the comments. Hopefully this has been helpful. Like I said, this has been kind of a common question recently, so I wanted to make sure I addressed it with a little bit more detail than I usually do. Other than that, enjoy.